Great Power Competitions has an ideology in Washington, D.C., in Beijing, in Paris, in London. It's about asserting the hegemonic status of the West. In Africa, that's not how Great Power is seen. Great Power Competition in Africa is seen as an opportunity that provides options and choices. So African countries welcome the choice and opportunity dimension of great power competition. They're not interested in the ideological side of it. Hi, I'm Vemba Pezo Dizolele, Senior Fellow and Director of the Africa Program at CSIS. And in the CSIS 2024 Global Forecast Report, a world dividing, I take a look at historical structural obstacles that stand on the way of a strong relation between the United States and African countries. The United States, like China and Russia, has a unique advantage when it comes to Africa. The United States has never colonized a single country in Africa. The United States, in so many ways, starts with a clean slate when it comes to Africa. The challenge, however, with the United States in its relations with African countries is that it's too close to former European colonial powers. And the U.S. approaches Africa through the prism of these European countries. And this is a problem because African countries are now sovereign, independent countries. The last thing they want is a partner who continues to see them through the European lens. It's like when people have broken up a relationship and every time somebody that you are interested in always brings your ex with them when they come to talk to you. In the end, you wonder, are you interested in me or are you interested in my ex? Why you continue bringing my ex? Maybe we have good relations, but I'm not really interested in talking to them. I'm interested in talking to you. Unfortunately, that's what the U.S. has been doing over the last five to six decades. The other challenge is the U.S. still approaches Africa through the old Cold War prism. That is us versus them. We look at Africans in their relations with Russia or the relations with China and we say, do not talk to those guys. They're bad guys. Great Power Competitions has an ideology in Washington, D.C., in Beijing, in Paris, in London. It's about asserting the hegemonic status of the West. In Africa, that's not how great power is seen. Great power competition in Africa is seen as an opportunity that provides options and choices. So African countries welcome the choice and opportunity dimension of great power competition. They're not interested in the ideological side of it. So in other words, if the United States has to offer X billions of dollars for Project Y, where well, Africans will look at it and compare it to what the Chinese or the Russians are providing. And then the third challenge for the United States, it's values and American values. The world is full of value ecosystems. Every country, every region has its own way of doing business. So when the U.S. elevates its culture wars, into the diplomatic circles and diplomatic relations with African countries that annoys Africans. The culture wars of the United States are just that, culture wars of the United States. A lot of those issues are very important, but those issues do not always resonate or translate in other parts of the world because often they may not be the issues in this part of the world. I think those are the challenges that the United States face in its engagement with Africa. It's 54 countries with different cultures, different histories, countries that are very interested in working with the United States, but who feel that the United States is not always committed to them, for them. In as much as the United States engages, the United States engages for other reasons. To read the full 2024 Global Forecast Report, please visit csis.org.